Welcome to this tips and tricks video entitled Overset Mesh Example in ANSYS Fluent. In this video you will learn how to set up an overset mesh model in ANSYS Mesher in ANSYS Fluent. Let's get to work. Welcome to this tips and tricks video entitled Overset Mesh Example in ANSYS Fluent. In this video you will learn how to set up an overset mesh model in ANSYS Mesher in ANSYS Fluent. So overset meshing can be particularly useful in simulations that include structured mesh around individual parts, part swapping, or moving cell zones. Let's get to work. Here we have our model opened in ANSYS Mesher. We're going to model the flow around a square void, but it's going to be modeled with overset. So we have two different surfaces here. This is the foreground mesh. Here you can see the square void. And now let's inverse the invert the visibility. And here you have the background mesh. OK, now let's show both. And let's get both of them meshed. OK, first thing we want to do is get rid of all contacts. So we're going to suppress these. We're going to insert a sizing function. On both surfaces. Okay, we want that to be 1 e to the minus 4. It's a very, very small domain. And let's mesh it. Okay, so there's our mesh. Now let's set up um, name selections. So this is going to be our inlet. This is going to be our outlet. are going to be walls. Okay, now we're going to have walls. For the void, let's make sure we got all of them there. Three edges, I missed one. Go back in. And we're good. Now the other thing we need to do is we need to define the overset interface, which is right here. And we're going to call that overset. So then once it's named overset, Fluent is going to know what to do with that. Okay, now we're going to name the cell zones. So this will be fluid background. And this will be fluid foreground. Great, now let's open this in Fluent. OK, so here's our mesh in Fluent. Let's go through the setup. I'm just going to turn on some turbulence here. Realizable K epsilon. I'm going to then set up uh, my overset region. Now I'm going to set up my boundary conditions. I'm just going to do one meter per second at the inlet. I'm going to leave the turbulence boundary conditions as a default. Okay. Here you see we have the um, overset that we defined in Mesher uh, overset boundary condition as an overset boundary condition. And here is the overset. Uh, interface that we just defined. Now let's initialize it. Okay, now I want to show you the mesh. Once the mesh, once the solution has been initialized, then you can actually see the overset mesh by clicking here on overset. And you can see that the void has been subtracted from the domain. 
the other thing that would happen once you initialize is in the console, if there are orphan cells, you would get a warning telling you how many orphan cells there are in the domain. Orphan cells are when the interface, the overset interface, does not have a good match in size and location of the background and the foreground mesh, and that can lead to errors in the solution. You're going to get a warning. It's not a fatal error, but it is a good thing to minimize. If you do have orphan cells, you may have to remesh to decrease or eliminate the orphan cell count. Okay, so now let's run the calculation. Let's do 100 time steps and see what that looks like. So our run has converged. Let's do some quick post-processing. Can do some velocity contours. And here, if we um, show the mesh as well, let's turn on overset so you can see the void. Okay, and there you go. There's your solution. Thanks so much for watching.